All right. Good evening, children. Can someone text me whether um, you guys can hear me? Whether I'm audible enough? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's start from the place we stopped. Uh, it is a thing that might happen to anybody, he said. Do not fret. Come, dry your eyes and sit up here beside me. So I did, and after a while I felt better. The tears left my eyes and dried on my lashes. Okay, so now do not fret. Come, dry your eyes and sit up here beside me. These, this dialogue, okay, these sentences were uttered by who? Yes, by Nadan. Okay, these these um, words by words were uttered by Nadan. So, what can be seen here? What is highlighted here? You know, Nadan seems to be a character who is very understanding. Okay, and um, you know there have been a lot of love and care within their relationship. Okay. For six hours we rode and um yeah for six hours we rode on and on along the dusty road passing several villages on the way to ours which was a good distance away halfway there we stopped and ate a meal boiled rice dal vegetables and curds that is you know that's typical indian uh, food okay indian type of food a whole coconut piece too, in which my husband nicked a hole with his scythe for me so that I might drink the clear milk. Then he unyoked, unyoked is released, the bullocks and led them to the small pool of water. You know, maybe, probably, not maybe, probably the bullocks, um, Nathan released the bullocks because they were uh, thirsty and they, they were hungry. Okay, so the when the bullocks are released, they can be, uh, they can refresh themselves for the rest of their journey. Okay. Um, unyoke the bullocks and led them to the small pool of water near which we had stopped, giving them each a handful of hay. So, you know, they were, they were thirsty. So, they were released uh, so that they could, they could um, go to the small pool of water and uh, then they were fed. Okay. Poor beasts, they seemed glad of the water, for already their hides were dusty. We rested a half hour before resuming our journey. The animals, refreshed, began stepping jauntily again, jauntily is happily, tossing their heads and jangling the bells that hung from their red-painted horns. The air was full of the sound of bells and of birds, sparrows and bulbuls mainly, and sometimes the cry of an eagle. But when we passed a grove, green and leafy, I could hear miners and parrots. It was very warm and unused to so long a jolting I fell asleep. You know, here they describe about their journey and the surrounding, okay, the environment, okay? Now, in this paragraph, you can see auditory images, visual images, okay? So, why are they used? All these, or both the types of imagery, why are they used? To, um, you know, uh, create the environment for the audience, okay? Because, um, you know, all these um, sounds of bells and of birds, sparrows, you know, all of these animals... Sometimes the cry of an eagle, okay? Uh, I could hear minas and parrots, okay? That is because um, in order to develop the sounds and the beauty of nature, okay? The writer creates a natural setting for the audience, okay? For the readers. All right, let's continue. This and other Indian um, sorry. This is not from the book, okay? It was my husband who woke me. Now here, this is kind of important. Why? Um, yeah, this is important as to uh, this was the first time 
wait, give me one second. This was the first time uh, this particular husband's name is uh, conveyed, is revealed to the readers for us, okay? So, and uh, also this husband, it was my husband, okay? So, it's Nadan is called, like the first time he was called as husband is from here, is from chapter one, okay? And um, who woke me? My husband, whom I will hear call, uh, I will call here Nadan, for that was his name. Although all the years of our marriage, I never called him that, for it is not meat. It is not meat in the sense it's not suitable, it's not appropriate for a woman to address her husband except as husband. Okay, so what is conveyed there? It's it's a traditional practice. It's a uh, it's a conventional practice in India, okay, uh, like the Indianness, the Indian customs and traditions, you know, can be highlighted there. We are home. He cried. Wake up. Look. I woke. I looked. A mud hut, thatched, small, set near a paddy field with two or three similar huts nearby. Okay, so this part is kind of emotional because um, this, uh, this thing, a mud hut, touched small, set near a paddy field. It's kind of emotional, emotion, more than emotional. This visual image, uh, you know, it conveys or it suggests the financial limitations of this family. Okay, especially of Northern. Okay, uh, across the doorway, a garland of mango leaves, symbol of happiness and good fortune, dry now and rattling in the breeze. Now, you know, this garland of mango leaves is said to be a symbol of happiness, a symbol of good fortune. But what is there? It's dry now. Okay, it's dry now. So, you know, um, uh, what what was I gonna say? It's it's an unpleasant uh vision, it's an unpleasant sign, okay? Because like that's the first time Rukmani, uh, the writer is um sorry, not the writer, the protagonist is seeing this, okay, seeing the house, not the house actually, but uh, the hut. But still uh this dried garland of mango leaves is not something um, very pleasant, okay? So, um, this mud hut, okay, this um, thatched small hut is kind of um, like that's below her expectations, okay? The protagonist did not expect something like this. Why? Because the protagonist is the daughter of a village headman. Okay? She would have never thought that she would have like married a tenant farmer and uh, had to live and will have to live in a mud hut. Okay? So, it's kind of below her expectations. All right? This is our home, my husband said. Come, I'll show you. I got out of the car, stiff and with a cramp in one leg, because they were sitting for so long. We went in, two rooms, one a sort of storehouse for grain, the other for everything else. A third had been begun but was unfinished. The mud walls were not more than half a foot high. It will be better when it is finished, he said. I nodded. I wanted to cry. This mud hut, nothing but mud and touch, was my home. Okay, so she, she is struggling to accept. Uh, she is struggling to accept the lack of financial support. Okay, because as I said earlier, she is a she is the daughter of a village headman, so 
she's kind of struggling to accept the fact that she's going to live here forever. Okay. Um, my knees gave first the cramped one, then the other. And I sank down. Sank in the sense she sat down. Okay. Um, you know, this like Nadan's face filled with concern as he came to hold me. You know, Nadan here, uh, she felt what uh, Rukmani would have felt. You know, she he felt her feelings. He felt her sentiments. He, like the protagonist didn't say, didn't even utter one word. But still, Nadan understood from her facial expressions, from her body language, he understood that she is kind of disparate at the moment okay so um disparate and disappointed for sure okay and um it is nothing i said i'm tired no more i will be all right in a minute you know she starts to adjust like she's she's trying to adapt to uh the new environment all right he said, perhaps you are frightened at living here alone, but in a few years we can move, maybe even buy a house such as your father's. You would like that? You know, um, Nadan is comforting Rukmani at the moment, like she's pacifying. He's pacifying, okay? Uh, there was something in his voice, a pleading, a look on his face, such as a dog has when you're about to kick it, Okay? Uh, no, I said, I'm not frightened. It suits me quite well to live here. He did not reply at once, but went into the granary and came out with a handful of paddy. Here, Nathan does this just to convince her that the situation where they were at the moment is kind of, uh, like it was all right it was kind of okay okay but it was not okay especially for Rukmani it was not why because um, she couldn't adapt herself to a new environment especially an environment like that all of a sudden okay she needed more time okay because uh, she herself marrying a tenant farmer is kind of a disappointment for her so just think her like herself living in a place like that, in a village like that. Okay, so it was kind of disappointed and like she was desperate. Okay, such harvests as this, he said, sliding the grains about in his hand. And you shall not want for anything, beloved. Then he went out to get the tin truck and after a while I followed. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions until now, please uh, send it to the chat box. If you have uh, any question, any doubt until now. Which one, Puta? Which one? Which one? Can you send me like the first uh, set of words? Oh, this one. He did not reply at once, but went into the granary and came. Okay, fine. Yeah. Uh, okay, she's asking for a point. All right. Write it. Nadan tries to console her. You can write the same thing for this as well. Okay, these both of these uh, quotes go together. Okay, he tries to console her by assuring that they will move. By assuring that they will move to a bigger house. 
in a few years time in a few years time full stop continue she tried her best she tried her best to adjust with the circumstances she tried her best to adjust with the circumstances as there was no other alternative as there was no other as there were no other alternative okay if it's clear up to here if it's clear up to here please raise your hand so we can continue all right let's read sometimes now i can see quite clearly the veil is rent and for a few seconds i see blue skies and tender trees then it closes on me again and once more i am back in a world of my own which darkens a little with each passing day so here like this the veil is rent and for a few seconds i see blue skies and tender trees you know like this part uh shows like she like she sometimes uh remembers the pleasantness of her past because you know this is the past right this is her past this is not the present moment she's living it so uh, she sometimes remind she's re sometimes reminded of her past okay the pleasantness of the past and then um, here why is it Yeah, I am back in a world of my own, which darkens a little with each passing day. This part, um, wait, this part is um, this is present. I am back in a world of my own, which darkens a little with each passing day. Here, she talks about the present. So, in the present, what is happening? What's going on? Her situation is getting worse every day. Okay, podda podda nara kalthra hai reno. There is no good or a positive thing happening in her life at the present moment. Okay, but sometimes here what, what said is sometimes she is reminded of the pleasantness of her past. Okay, and then as soon as she tell that, she comes to her present, like she comes to the reality. Fine? Yes. Uh, yet not alone for the faces of those I have loved, things that have been, shapes, forms and images are always before me. And sometimes they are so vivid that truly I cannot say whether I see them or not. You know, she's in a doubtful situation. Okay, because um, she helps slipping back and uh, like she keeps slipping back and forth between her past and the present. So, this kind of proves that the narrator is extremely old now, okay? Because for her, for her to have such memories, such big memories, okay? Uh, she's kind of old, okay? Uh, whether the veil is lifted to allow me the sight or whether it is only my mind that sees. Today, for instance, I could see the brook that ran near our paddy field so clearly that I felt I had to but. I had but to stoop to feel its water wet on my hands. Yet that brook belongs to a part of my life that is finished. Okay. You know, she's old. Okay. I was a bride of only a week when I first followed it to look for a suitable place for my washing. I walked for nearly an hour before I found a wide stretch of water and a sandy beach with boulders scattered about. I put my bundle down, untied it and put the clothes in. The water was clear but not swift running. The linen did not flow too far or too quickly away from my hands. I tucked my sari up above my knees and stood in the river, 
scrubbing the clothes against a large flat stone and using just a little of the washing powder my mother had given me. Good stuff, with a clean sweet smell and much power in it. When I had finished, I carried the clothes beyond the beach and laid them on the grassy bank to dry in the sun. You know, here uh, you can see the hardships, the tough work uh, that Rukmani had to go through. Okay. And it's, it's actually a new experience for her. Okay. And, uh, you know, she, she, is the, she is the daughter of a village headman. And uh, she was living a very comfortable life, okay? But now, she doesn't have any comforts at all. She have to do uh, her things by herself, okay? Not only her things, but her husband's things as well because she's married, okay? And um, here, uh, about the washing powder that her mother had given her, uh, she, she is very careful. Why? Using just a little of the washing powder my mother had given me. Now she is living a very ordinary lifestyle. Okay? And um, at the present moment, she is accepting and she understands her husband's situation. She understands Nathan's situation and she is trying to adjust accordingly. Okay? As I said, she doesn't have any other alternative. So, she is trying to adjust herself uh, according to the uh, situation. All right. Just then, I saw Kali, wife of our neighbor, coming towards me. And with her were two women I had not seen before. All carried bundles of washing on their heads and two had children at their hips and the third was except expecting. They called out when they saw me and I came down a little shy since they seemed to know each other so well. But before long I came to know them well too. These three women had lived nearest to us and whose lives were so closely woven with mine. Kali, big and plump, plump is fat, with ample hips, ample is uh, wide, and thrusting breasts whose husband worked the next field to us. Janaki married to the village shopkeeper with a homely face and sagging figure. Sagging in the sense is hanging like a thin body. For she had borne her husband several children and Kunti, youngest of the three, small and narrow, moving gracefully despite her burden. Okay, so here uh, she starts to mingle with her neighbors. Okay, she is starting to getting, she starts to get to know about her neighbors. All right, it is her first, said Kali jovially, jovially is happily, but by no means her last, for as you see, her husband has not wasted any time. She laughed loudly. Janaki frowned at her. Chap woman, do you not see these young girls? And what of it? Are they not given in marriage? Kunti is already bearing, and this newcomer, it will not be long. Men are all the same. Okay. Um, I saw Kunti struck with a slight disdain. Janaki was quiet. Perhaps they both knew the futility of trying to restrain Kali, like to stop Kali. It was kind of hard, okay? She meanwhile was addressing herself to me. You are Rukmani, are you not? Wife of the farmer Nagar. The whole village has been curious about you. Heaven knows why. One woman is like another. The fuss your husband made. Why? For weeks he was as brittle as a bamboo before it bursts into flame. He built your hut with his own hands. Yes, he would not even have my husband to help. So, what happens here? Hmm? What happens? Nathan has put up the house all alone. Okay. And uh, here about this um, simile as a bamboo before it bursts into flame. Nathan has worked so hard. So hard. He had made a lot of efforts 
in order to make in order to build this hut okay and um, now a man building a house all alone is quite hard okay and it's kind of like it's something that a woman should appreciate because you know a husband building not just making something a building a house for the sake of her wife for the, for the sake of his wife is kind of um you know um it shows the love and value that he had given to his wife okay so here what we can tell is um nadan's like this effort nadan's effort of building a hut for rukmani shows the love and value like love care and value he had for rukmani okay and um, built it i said now now rukmani from one hand, from one side she feels proud of her husband okay from the other side she is surprised she is shocked and she is excited to to hear this news okay because this is the first time she is hearing it okay so because nadan did not say anything okay so she is kind of excited built it i said i did not know he did not tell me oh yes every bit of it himself and neglecting the land sometimes to do it so that sivaji had often to chide him chide is scold although he is a good man for a cemetery agent he had made a home himself and i had felt only fear to live in it now now she is guilty okay and she regrets for the reaction which she like which she, which she made at the very first time when seeing the house okay um to show that she is proud of him and appreciates his hard work his effort um like it shows how sincere and genuine right now the niece because as i said building a house for his wife and he has not even take taken anyone's help for building it so it's kind of like it's a genuine effort okay about a month later when we were no longer strangers i told him of what i had learned now here they both of them openly talks with each, with each other okay they are not uh, strangers you built this for us i said to him why did you not tell me who has been talking to you he asked not answering my question now nadan doesn't answer rukmani's question he just uh, neglects it and asks kaud aur mai wa kyu hai ha he asks so kali she told me a long time ago when i first went to where the brook widens near the river she is an old chatterbox and should have her mouth stitched okay so here uh, kali is being described okay what for i am glad she told me should i not be proud that you have built this house with your own hands okay um now she is kind of uh, appreciating nadan okay he considered he considered you are not a child anymore he said at last you have grown fast since the day we were married and not and that not so long ago okay now rukmani is matured and um, she understands things at the present moment okay because as you guys remember this was a child marriage okay when she came when rukmani came to nadan's place she was a child she was immature okay but now she is not a child any she is mature enough while the sun shines on you and and the fields are green and beautiful to the eye and your husband sees beauty in you which no one has seen before and you have a good store of grain laid away for hard times a roof over you and a sweet stirring in your body what more can a woman ask for now here rukmani is happy with what she has okay now she gradually has learned to be happy with whatever she gets and what with whatever she has okay and um, you know um, she is satisfied with the simple life okay now she has almost forgotten about the comfortable lifestyle she had lived 
um, when she was with her father. Okay, as I said, as she is mature now, she understands things now. She is mature enough to understand everything. My heart sang and my feet were light. As I went about my work, getting up at sunrise and going to sleep content. Peace and quiet were ours. How well I recall it. Recall in the sense, remind, reminish. How grateful I am that not all the clamour, which is joy, which invaded our lives later could subdue the memory or still the longing for it. Rather, it has strengthened it. Had there not been what has been, I might never have known how blessed we were. True, my husband did not own the land he tilled, as my father had done, yet the possibility was there that he might one day do so. Okay, now here, the reality is, Nathan doesn't own the land which, is, which he is working for. Okay, but the possibility is, one day he might get that land. Okay, so here the present reality and the possibility, like their hopes and expectations are conveyed. We owned our own plowing bullocks. We kept a milch goat. From each harvest we saved and had gunny sacks full of the husked rice stored away in our small stone-lined granary. There was food in plenty for two people and we ate well. Rice for morning and evening meals, dal, sometimes a coconut grated fine, and cooked in milk and sugar, sometimes a wheat cake, fried in butter and melting in the mouth. Okay, now here, they were quite in a uh, satisfied financial position. Okay, they were kind of um, okay, like they are, they are better than what they was. Okay, when uh, Nathan brought Rukmani after marriage, like they are better than that situation now. Okay. Once or twice a week, I would go to the village to buy sugar, ghee and vegetables, calling on the way home at Durgan, the milkman's. Now, Durgan is the name of the milkman. To get curds, for our goat was running dry and there was not always enough milk to make my own. I liked going to the village and meeting its people for they were a friendly lot and most of them anxious to help if they could. I got to know them all very quickly. Now here, like the way she is adapting to the society and the present situation is uh, highlighted. And this is, this, is their now, this is their ordinary lifestyle now. Okay, their daily routines. Old Granary, who lived on what she made by selling peanuts and guavas, Hanuman, the general merchant, Perumal, husband of Janaki, who kept the only shop, and Biswas, the moneylender. Now, you know, new characters uh, are introduced with their professions and relationships. Now, for example, um, Durgan, he's the, he's the milkman. Okay. And uh, now there, Durgan is a new character and his profession is introduced. And now here, uh, Perumal, He's a new character and his relationship, what is the relationship? He's the husband of Janaki. So, they are in this paragraph, the professions and the relationships are introduced uh, with the new characters. Okay. Janaki or Kali. Yes. Janaki or Kali would come to see how I was getting on, but not often. For they were kept busy looking after husband and children. As for Kunti, very soon she was unable to do anything for herself for she was a thin, slight girl and we had to go in turns to buy her provisions and to help her with the work in the home. You know, it's a very friendly neighborhood. Okay, like they were very helpful to one another. Okay. Kunti was different from the other women. Quieter, more reserved. More reserved in the sense um, she is not very open-hearted. Like whatever she thinks, she keeps keeps them to herself. Okay, she doesn't talk much. And um, yes. And for all that, we tried to be at ease with her. There was a barrier which we could not surmount. Surmount is to overcome. 
especially high against me it stood, strange and forbidding, although why this should be I could not think, finally putting it down to my imagination. Okay, now um, there was a great distance between Kunti and Rukmani. Okay, but still the reason for that is not yet known. Okay, she had everybody said married beneath her. Her husband was actually a lower status person than her. Okay. Perhaps they said that of me too. But I was plain. Plain is simple. And she was pretty. So it didn't make sense in her case. For myself, I am glad I married beneath me. For, um, for a finer man, no one could have had. But possibly, she was not so lucky. Okay, now here... Uh, Rukmani is highly impressed and passionate about her marrying uh, Nagan. Okay, though though he is a tenant farmer, though he is uh, someone who is um, in a lower status than her, she is she is happy. Okay, she understands it, and um, she has a good attitude. She has a very good attitude about her husband, about Nagan. Okay. A man is indeed fortunate if he does not marry above him. For if he does, he gets a wife who is no help to him. You know, uh, when when you marry, when a man marries a girl, a woman who is of high status than him or who is more educated, you know, uh, in everything, if he is like more than uh, what um, the husband has, what the man has, uh, may... It might be like the woman might be going out of control. Okay. So, um, it's, it's, um, what do you call, um, it's kind of uh, difficult to maintain a marriage, mar married life, uh, with a relationship like that. Okay. Whatsoever, only an ornament. Yes. It's only something used to beautify. Okay. But it, it has no purpose in general. Okay. It's kind of a metaphor. Okay. I know for I was ignorant of the simplest things and no ornament either. Kali and Janaki. Now Kali and Janaki are very friendly and helpful neighbors. Okay. Between them had to show me how to milk the goat, how to plant seed, how to churn butter from milk and how to hull rice. Now she starts learning stuff. Okay, she adjusts to the society. What patience indeed my husband must have had to put up with me uncomplainingly during those early days of our married lives. Okay, now at the present moment only she realizes how uh, patient Nathan was with her. Okay. Um, not one cross word or impatient look and praise for whatever small success I achieved. You know, um, Rukmani loved the way uh, she got feedback or she she uh, she got appreciated by another. Okay, even for a very small thing, uh, even for a very small task, she was praised and she was appreciated, which was a very good quality of another. Okay. Um, I had planted in the flat patch of ground behind the hut a few pumpkin seeds. The soil here was rich, never having yielded before, and loose so that it did not require much digging. The seeds sprouted quickly, sending up delicate green shoots that I kept carefully watered, going several times to the well nearby for the purpose. Soon they were not delicate but sprawling vigorously over the earth and pumpkins began to form which fattening on soil and sun and water swelled daily larger and larger and ripened to yellow and red until at last they were ready to eat. And I cut one and I took it in. Okay, now here she gets now, this is now, Nadan is a tenant farmer which is a, uh, he is related to an agricultural lifestyle. 
So here, Rukmani is also starting to adjust, starting to learn about uh, that type of lifestyle. Okay, she gets into a, agriculture. When Nadan saw it, he was full of admiration, which is praise, and made much of this one fruit, he who was used to harvesting a field at a time. You know, she is actually impressed with the way he appreciated her. Even for a small thing, he has a huge token of admir admiration towards her. Okay? One would have thought you had never seen a pumpkin before. Okay? Now, this is something Rukmani says. Okay? Like, Kauruhari Oyamava Prashansa Kanna Vidya Dakka Nam Emini Suhitai Oya Kavadakvat Vattaka Kediya Dakka Lana Hai Kiya. So, you just think how much... Like how much praise he gives uh, Rukmani. Okay. I said, though pleased with him and myself, keeping my eyes down. Not from our land, said Nadan. He has a different kind of pride towards Rukmani. Okay. Therefore, it is precious. And you, Ruku, are indeed a clever woman. Okay. She is appreciated. I tried not to show my pride. I tried to be offhand. I put the pumpkin down, a uh, pumpkin away, but pleasure was making my pulse beat. The blood, unbidden, came hot and surged into my face. You know, uh, this this uh, actually reflects a very happy past. You know, uh, a joyful and a peaceful past. Okay, and you know the family love. Okay, the love in the relationship is highlighted. After that, ten times more zealous is enthusiastic. I planted beans and sweet potatoes, brinjals and chilies, and they all grew well under my hand. Okay, now here, uh, Rukmani is supportive to Nadan now. Okay, in order to get, in order to have a very fine, a very good financial uh, situation, the wife, as a wife, she helps Nadan. Okay, um, although she was from an upper class background, okay, whether although she uh, she is a, a daughter of the village headman, she supported her husband. She supported Nadan and adjusted herself according to what he could afford, okay, and uh, so that we ate even better than we had done before, okay. She gets used to the agricultural lifestyle gradually with all exciting encouragement as well the reason for this is even for the for a small successful event of rukmani nadan gives a very um you know very huge token of appreciation admiration to rukmani and with that you know like Nikanjitana, when you when you do something, like as children just think when you do something, when you do a very good thing, and if the teacher stills blame still blames you, karan ne mana haridwada karan kuchra ki wat tahan na like not like that. Like when you when you praise a student, then then only uh, he or she um comes up with good work. Okay. So in the same way, Rukmani is uh, adjusting herself okay and uh, yes with this chapter one is over okay so i would like to um answer any of your questions if you have any because um before going into before stepping into chapter two i would like to uh, clear all your doubts about chapter one so if you have any doubts please um raise your hands or like put them into your into the chat box, please. Yes. Any? All right then, fine. Uh, I've sent all the notes and um, I've sent some videos as well. 
so please like if i tell you to do something that's for your own benefit okay so don't uh, neglect them all right uh, please do them get the notes out of them and i've sent um, my notes as well as presentations i've sent some slides go through them as well uh, take them down to your writing books and uh, before we start the next chapter before the next day please read chapter one okay reread chapter one so it would go into your head okay so uh, let's start from chapter two the next day um please go through i'll send the recording to the group as well please go through the recording and uh, write down the notes in your writing book and um, go through the videos i've sent you and i've sent some articles as well uh, go through them and if you have any doubt please feel free to con uh, please feel free to um, send me a text okay uh, and yes as i see i don't you guys don't have any questions okay so shall we wind up for today then okay all right okay thank you children god bless you have a good night okay